zoomed in now. Hey you YouTubers, how's it going? Wanted to show you a few things about the uh, 7300 that I've uh, been learning about and uh, thought I'd post them here on YouTube. Um, first thing is if you get one of these and the printed manual that comes with it is the basic manual and not until you go on to the CD-ROM that comes with it and look at the PDFs in there where you find the detailed manual and I highly recommend that everybody do that because that's where a lot of these uh, extra settings are that are really cool and you get much more enjoyment out of this radio when you uh, uh, can explore some of these things <coughs> so uh, I'm just listening right now to this air mobile guy he's flying somewhere over uh, east of Lake Michigan but uh, what I wanted to focus on for this video was some of the spectrum scope settings. Um, so uh, there's the expanded mode of the spectrum scope. Let's just look through some of the uh, settings that you can do with this because uh, this is where you get a lot of cust customizability. And I was concerned before this radio came out that, you know, how would they. Um, give you the ability to adjust these things without a computer because this is usually done let's say if you have a flex or an SDR um, shortwave set then you do this on your computer with the mouse and lots of settings to change so how did they do let's look so there's um, if you press and hold that button called expanded set um, you come into a scope setting and we'll, we'll start at the top and go down through the ones that I've learned so far so VBW is narrow or wide and what that does is um, when when this is tracing a line across that horizontal line um, the line can be more detailed and thin or it can be a bit more rounded like this so these QSOs now look kind of like rounded blobs and uh, uh, some might like that I kind of like the uh, the thin the narrow look better because it's uh, a bit more precise in how it tracks uh, those QSOs oops so averaging um, averaging you have several settings you can do this is averaging turned right off um, when it's turned right off it it's a bit disconcerting because you'll see uh, all these flashing lights across that um, which kind of shows you how fast the processor in this radio is is that it can process um, that quickly is is kind of nice so you've got all kinds of uh, averaging you can do uh, I just like a little bit of averaging and it just takes that flashing away and then gives you a bit more of uh, it makes it a bit easier to spot where those QSOs are when you go up to four um, then again this is just showing what's above the line um, things just kind of go up and down a bit more blobby looking I think I like it at about two now the waveform type is either a fill or a fill plus line and again we're talking about what's above the horizontal line there so when it's doing it, its trace um, there's the immediate reaction and then there's the uh, um, there's a line that is drawn and then inside that line is filled by default you can um, have just fill or fill with line and there's a way also to have just a line and that's um, not done on this setting but that is done by turning this on to just um, fill plus line and then changing the color of the fill to black and then that basically will um, give you just a line so uh, here's where you would do that so there's the waveform color of the line and the waveform color of the max hold. So the line right now 
is kind of a brown and is that the default? Yeah, that's the default. But that's kind of weird color to have it. Let's turn that right up to bright red and see what how it shows. So there you can see that line as it's being drawn is now bright red and the fill below it is still um, not red but let's just put that back to the default for now. So the waveform color of the max hold is now um, sort of the, the area above that's kind of dimmer there and that's where um, it's a setting where you can either turn that off and on or have it on decay of um, 10 seconds and I'll show you that in a second. Oh, so some color settings and those are just kind of RGB settings you know red green blue and if you don't if you've messed it up and don't like what you've set it to then just press and hold this default you're, you're back to factory setting. So uh, waterfall display uh, of course you probably want that on and the waterfall speed, I, I kind of like it on fast, but you have fast, mid, and slow. Let's show it on slow and see the difference. So now we're talking about what's displayed below the horizontal line. And as you can see, it's kind of very slow now, which kind of gives you a further look into the past, if you will, because uh, it's scrolling much slower. Um, that's up to you what you like to set that to. I kind of like it fast because it's uh, it's a bit more lively. But personal taste. Waterfall size when you're on expanded screen. So um, you can have this small. So what we're talking about is um, the size of the waterfall here as a percentage of this whole section here. Press and hold that, go to large. Now you can see that it's almost all waterfall. All right, and there's a medium setting as well. So, you know, whatever your taste is, uh, I kind of like it uh, with a bit more on top and a bit less on bottom. Um, peak grid. So this one's a little bit tricky to understand. When we are, um, well, not really, but um, when we're monitoring the, um, the band here, a strong signal tends to go into the yellows and reds, and weak signals are dark blue. That depends on how high they rise on these grids. So if you want um, it to be more responsive and go into the yellows and reds with a weaker signal, then you just choose that it doesn't take as many grids to get those different colors. So the more you go up, if you pick grid 8 for instance, it's going to look pretty bland. Everything is dark blue here and uh, it's really hard to pick out the strong signals. On the other hand, if I go all the way up to grid 1, then it's kind of nasty to read that and uh, everything looks like it's just overpowering the front end almost. So um, this is one where um, makes sense to kind of have it <coughs> midway and that of course uh, change depending on band conditions and that sort of thing. So that's one that you're probably going to be using quite a bit. Uh, waterfall marker auto hide. Um, yeah I just leave that on. That's the uh, line there that for your center tuning and um, of course you want to know where you're tuned and uh, if you move up and down then you don't want it below the waterfall either. So auto hide is on. And fixed edges, that is your tuning, your band edges of the scope. So um, you know like for 20 meters it would be 14 up to 14,350 or you can um, select others. So um, that's where you modify that and it's just basically again preferences of how much is displayed here when you go through the different uh, <coughs> settings of um, 
your center, your edge there. So, yeah. Um, that's that. So some of the scope functions, they've, they've done a pretty good job, I think, of giving you enough flexibility to get the display to something that's uh, meaningful and responsive and easy on the eyes. So good job, ICOM. And, uh, you know, there's a, a couple things that could probably um, um, improve on that. And I, I hope to see uh, some f firmware uh, fixes come out as this radio gets a little bit older and uh, yeah it's, it's it's really really well done for a, uh, a 1.0 release of uh, this type of te technology for ICOM so well done ICOM um, having a, a ton of fun with uh, my radio and, and and hope hope you sell a boatload all right see you guys later 73